Hi guys, this is a quick video on um, triangles. So, um, I mean, I want to move into that in one second, but um, once again, the channel is growing quite nicely. If you got any any comments, please like, please share, please subscribe, please um, um, uh, please share uh, on your social media platforms. Um, it's going well. I mean, as I said, I want to start moving away from Bitcoin because I do trade. Um, a lot of other uh, things other than uh, Bitcoin and I want to talk about money as well so um, we'll get onto the triangle um, debate in a minute what I wanted to show you was just a bit of history really so um, America is um, quite a fascinating country really so um, America as you all know 1776 was its independence but um, unfortunately they've been controlled quite viciously by central banks ever since and it's the fed who literally controls the world in terms of um its influence and and the fred is is not a government institution it's a private institution and um that's why you know people always say jp morgan goldman sachs they they rule the world and they quite literally do rule the world because they are shareholders of the central bank and it's the fed who loan to the government now during america's fascinating history i mean it's, it's only been around for 350 years yet it's you know risen to a massive superpower during that time um there's been three great presidents so this is the last great president of america and um as you all know he was assassinated november 22nd 1963 likely it was an inside job and the reason he was assassinated was um because of this because he wanted to take away the uh the central bank and he wanted to it was executive order four ones and one zero and that was in 1963 june the 4th okay that was approximately four or five months before he was killed and essentially he wanted to make the uh dollar backed by silver okay and once they got word of this this the reserve actually never ended up going through and um that was why he was assassinated because he was against the central banks um sort of uh way of thinking and and you know it's it's it is what it is i mean he tried his best and he got assassinated there's actually a very famous speech which he does on um the banks and the societies and all this secret stuff and it's a very famous speech and i will leave the link to that speech um in the description now he was um subsequently subsequently replaced by Lyndon B. Johnson and this guy was an absolute cock so it was him who took this law away and he was then replaced by Nixon and we know what Nixon did he then started um, the futures contracts and he eliminated gold and I've spoken about this in a previous video it's because of him that we have the COMEX so um, it, it, it was unfortunate he was a great man he was a great man and he should not have died he died way too young and um, it's a shame because uh you know america is a fascinating country it's a superb country it's a great country I'm, I'm a britain myself and i do love the country it's just a shame how it's run by a complete bunch of crooks and another great man was this man abraham lincoln he was also assassinated because of this the greenbacks now the reason he wanted to bring in the greenbacks was once again he did not want um the bank at that time it wasn't the federal reserve i think it was the first bank of america i think that that was their name they were um essentially loaning out money to the government uh, to fight in the civil war um and and he wanted to bring back the greenback uh, he he wanted to bring in the greenback essentially which was government issued money with no interest attached and um he was assassinated soon after okay and um they tried to get Andrew Jackson, okay, 1833, December the 10th, he shut down the second bank of the US. They tried to assassinate him um, a little bit before that, but um, he used to be a soldier, so he must have done some matrix shit, but he managed to dodge the bullet or something, or he got a bullet out of his chest, but they were unsuccessful. But in the end, Andrew Jackson, he himself... Um, whittled away unfortunately so many times during america's short history they've tried to stop the centralization of money and um, these are the three great presidents who have read up on so i advise well not I'd, i advise but i would recommend looking into their history a little bit more for anyone who 
doesn't understand the how money works okay because essentially it's the central banks who are printing all the money and our nation's currency is being devalued on a day-by-day -day basis now obviously because of this this free paper money floating around um, inevitably ends up in the stock market and the stock market is is then incredibly incredibly liquid and because it's so liquid that's why you can make money okay but um, stocks and shares to one side America did have some very very great presidents who were thinking the right thing they were very good people and unfortunately they um, they uh, got removed okay so it's Jackson Lincoln and um, Kennedy who was a superb man great man and um, here we go here's Rothschilds I'm sure you know all about Rothschilds and let me issue and control the nation's money and I care who not who writes this law okay and that's what the Federal Reserve is they do not give a toss what the laws are in America or in the world for that matter they print the money the minute you print money you're then um, the people um, are then slaves are then in debt, automatically in debt, okay? And these private banks figured a long, long time ago, you can hire out to uh, people and you'll make a bit of return, but even better, you can hire out to governments, okay? And when you hire out to governments, the collateral is the people of that country, and so that's how it works. And so, essentially, we are the same. If you guys were to look at your UK P, I think it's the P45, is it, that comes every year? or the P32, whatever, around April time, the end of the financial year, everyone in the UK who's self-employed, I mean, who's on PAYE, they get a certificate, which essentially is a pie chart. Now, the pie chart um, describes exactly where the tax that you've paid during that year goes. So it talks about health, military, defense, um, expenses, whatever. But there's a small percentage which is labeled as government debt, and that's essentially what we're doing. So part of your... Part of everyone's tax in the UK and for the world for that matter is going off completely um, wrongfully, in my opinion, to pay off the Bank of England or whichever the bank is to pay off their interest, um, to pay off the interest on the loans that we've borrowed from the Bank of England. Okay, And that's why if you look at it, the dollar and the pound have lost about 70% of their value um since these central banks came in okay so it's just it's interesting to know about that because a lot of people don't a lot of people wake up every day with their you know ha get on the hamster wheel and and they're they're off to work they do their nine till fives and then that's it but actually if you break it down um the world unfortunately is a, is, is a quite a scary place once you understand how the world works it's the biggest fraud in human history and as I said, this is not a political uh, channel. I don't want to get into wars and stuff, but wars are very, very carefully timed, unfortunately. Um, they're blamed on certain uh, groups in society, regardless of who it is at that time of the year, whatever the buzz sort of word is. And um, uh, they're then blamed, and then they, they, they use these people to uh, as scapegoats, uh, scapegoats, uh, really. And um, it's a bit of a shame. So... I think it's important for everyone to be aware now that there's a very good um, YouTube uh, video on this called Zeitgeist and I'm sure you guys have come across it before but I would highly recommend you guys watch this video I mean it's from a long long time ago they speak about money and they speak about how the Federal Reserve was um, formed which was um, 1914 Federal Reserve and it was this dickhead Wilson who essentially who authorized it um so yeah look at that look how sneaky they are they 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 pop the bill through congress uh on christmas eve eve knowing that no one would be in and it was pedro woodrow wilson this dickhead who authorized it and he was getting a lot of pressure from the banks at that time and uh what do you know um five years after the federal reserve act you have world war one 1918 um, and there you go, and that then starts off, um, I think it's 120, uh, how much is it, I think 100 million died during the war, um, I'm not sure about the numbers, but I'm pretty sure it's at least 150 million have died 
since the Federal Reserve Act came into play. So the propensity and the frequency of wars have massively increased over the last hundred years compared to any time throughout human history. Okay, and um, money creates uh, man money. This Reserve Act is is basically the underpinning behind today's society. Unfortunately. Um, we are slaves and there's no way to get out of that the only if you can't beat them join them and the stock market is simply one of those ways in which you can make some money so um it's interesting to see how to see how that is so anyway that's that's um just the background there i don't know if you guys are interested um but i think it's important for everyone to be aware that um there's a uh, something more than just you know what what you get fed on the news and in the newspapers and stuff but anyway that's it and anyway let me just leave you with yeah so this is what this dickhead said after well he was on his deathbed deathbed when he said it before his death stated i am most unhappy unwittingly i've ruined my country okay so later on he admits it and he understood um jfk un understood this abraham lincoln did andrew jackson they all understood that um you know the federal reserve act or any kind of centralization of money was going to end up bad and the people were going to be slaves and in the end, credit to him, he had enough heart to realise what he had done was wrong. But once the act is in, um, that's it. There's no way of getting out. It's actually an unconstitutional act, and they call it Federal Reserve to make people think that um, it's part of the government, but it's actually not. It's actually a private tax. So if you're in America paying federal tax, I think it is, that's, actually, that's as if I'm paying J.P. Morgan or Halifax or Bank of Scotland. You're paying a private institution your well hardened money so um understand how money works how it moves around okay now with that being said obviously with the stock market there's plenty of liquidity now certainly exponentially more than it has been prior to 1913 and so because of that the movements in the stock markets are massively exaggerated and because of that you can make a lot of money so um what's what's going on here this 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 seems to be breaking down out of the triangle so um, I was going to project a target here um, to, well, 8292. Um, I was going to do the, this tutorial on triangles, but I'm not convinced that this is a triangle, to be honest. I mean, not not now, anyway. Um, I was just using it purely as a tutorial point of view. This C wave shouldn't be lower than this A wave. So this is not a good triangle. In fact, let's 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 forget about this. Um, let's let's take this triangle here. This is a lot better. Um, that wasn't a good triangle. So. Um, anyway, with, with all that money stuff being said, let's go on triangles. So it's, it's, it's essentially triangles are a corrective pattern. Okay, typically they'll retrace, retrace about thirty-eight point two percent, and typically they are wave fours. They're not usually wave twos, although this is um, this 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 uh, isn't a rule. It's just what happens most of the time. Okay, and they don't take an A B C. They take an A B C D E. Okay. Where essentially B and D are lower than the starting point, and C and E are lower than the uh, uh, starting point of the first correction down. Okay, so essentially this is what we call a uh, contracting symmetrical triangle. Okay, typically the volume will drop during the triangle, and then it will expand on the breakout of that triangle. Okay, and your price target is typically the length of A, and you project this out from the triangle there okay so your minimum target is um 7036 in, in that case okay actually sorry you project it from the breakout e well some people project it from here or from the breakout e i like to do it from e as you can see here that's why there's some resistance here because they were selling based on that triangle <laughs> okay now um, the reason I want to show you triangles because triangles are, are very boring. Okay, stay away from anything that can hurt you. Yeah, there's no point trading during a triangle. It's a complete waste of mental energy. Um, I mean, look how long this is took from 1300 here. I mean, that that's took almost 
a day, is it? A day and a half? Who knows? Um, you'd much rather trade the impulsive way. So triangles are just a way to bore the hell out of people, shake people out. Although, if you get in, if you count the waves correctly and you count A, B, C and then the D, you're then on to a winner because then you can put your stop just below C, knowing that E can't go below C, else it's not a triangle. And then you can catch the big impulse. So triangles are quite boring, but if you grab onto the end of the triangle, volume helps to confirm. As you can see here, look at this volume starting to come in here on this E wave and it can be very very profitable because the boundaries are quite clear the extension target is just this added well some people do this um, this added to this so either to the breakout there or to here wherever <laughs> so they are they can be very very good. A good um, friend of mine likes to trade uh, triangles. Personally I don't like them but if I manage to uh, have a look and the triangle I feel that it's in the D and the E wave I might get involved only because I know a breakout is imminent and these breakouts are just unbelievable because they're just so impulsive, so impulsive, so impulsive. You go in, the minute you get a dodgy candle like this you just get the hell out of there. Okay. Now as you can see on my indicators I've quickly changed them. Okay. Um, and the reason I'm changing because I want to show you stochastics. Okay, um, let me take off MACD. I mean, I don't use stochastics. I only use them for triangles. Um, but even then, I'm not. I'm not a huge uh, fan of stochastics. Okay. Um, I want to show you something better. Now, it's usually um, triangles. Usually, um, stochastics give you information on the on the buy points for the triangles okay so typically if you see here the start it's oversold yeah it makes an a wave it goes to sorry it's overbought oversold then this b wave is oversold again this c wave is probably um well actually c wave was there so let's just call it somewhere between here okay so it's not entirely accurate but this this wave goes oversold this d wave is uh, well, it would be there because that's higher than there, and then E wave would be there. And as you can see, this D wave is getting here. So I just wanted to show you how stochastics can be used within a triangle. And typically, that's the only time I would ever use stochastics because it tends to show the up and down movements fairly well. Okay, so you can almost predict if you wanted to have a trader triangle you just go off the stochastics okay and what you can see here are the early signs of some divergence okay this on the 30 minute chart so here within this c wave because that would be that would probably be an a b and a c yeah so within this c wave off the c within this c off the c um You've actually got price making a slightly lower low, but you've got stochastics making a higher high. So you're already getting some divergence early on here. <clears throat> and that's telling you that there's something brewing. There's something about to go. And then you get this move up to this stochastic here. Once again, you're getting some divergence. Okay. This is, um, <clears throat> well, it's divergence going down, but you can even pop a trend line there if you wanted to and a trend line here. So everything sort of contracting on the upside yeah um as it would do within the triangle now so price then gets to here this is a higher high than here price makes a lower low so that's some divergence and then here you're getting some well not so much divergence but you're getting a higher low and then prices then moving out of that as well okay now and then continually you get a higher low so you're getting higher lows, higher lows, boom, and the stochastics is following now. So stochastics can be very useful um, when used inside triangles. As I said, I'm not a huge fan of triangles myself, but occasionally when I'm in a, a really big one, I might trade this B wave up or this C wave down. I might have a go trade that, but typically I'd like to get in right at the end. And as long as stochastics is showing me something interesting, either some obvious divergence or just some regular normal price movements <clears throat> but this divergence is a bit of a giveaway here this shows you some things about to get brewing and as much as the volume is diminishing throughout the triangle once again <clears throat>
by the way, guys, um, I advise that you guys start drawing trend lines on a lot of things that you do. Now, everything can have a trend line. Stochastics, volume, uh, MACD, you can draw trend lines actually on the indicators too, yeah? And that's what I like doing because it just gives you a bit of a trend and it's all about trends, isn't it? So volume starting to go down. But as you can see here, volume starting to spike above this trend line. So you're getting the early signs that something you're getting the very very early signs that something is what's happened there um well you well you get the point don't you so volume's going down you're getting the early signs that something is brewing here volume is picking up above the average on this 30 minute time frame than it has been before and this yellow line is the 20 um point moving average on the 30 minute line as you can see volume's pretty much touch that or stayed below it and here you're getting some spikes above it spikes above it spikes above so this is the volume analysis on this okay Wyckoff would call this a redistribute reaccumulation zone okay that's what he would have called it but you get this diminishing volume but then you get these spikes these spikes above the yellow line above the trend line and that shows you there's some bullish activity going on and typically that happens along the edge of that sort of triangle okay so once again as i always say don't just use elliot use the indicators so they're showing you higher lows with some divergence volume is diminishing diminishing but then here it starts to pop up it starts to pop up and that yellow line starts to flatten out and then trend upwards okay and then also you've got this a b c d e pattern okay so it's it's very very powerful when you use all of these things together you can really predict your trading really really well and um you know this 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 50 ema line that i use i mean look how how look how nice it just follows that line i mean from here to here this is such a great line i mean it will obviously change depending on which time frame you're on um, typically on the hourly that's the one that i like to use i mean look at this look how great this 50 ema is so you know, it's 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 hit that line there, it's hit it again, it's hit it again, it's flattening out, it's curving over, and now this 50 is going to act as some sort of support going all the way up. Um, I know someone who only trades um, a, a break off the 50 EMA, that's all that they do. They they buy in on a, on a break, so the break would have been, well, here, I suppose, because that's that's not been confirmed. The break is here, then they just buy, and they're waiting for a close, below the 50 EMA to get out. And even that in itself as a trading idea is pretty good because, you know, you could have got in here. That's not a confirmation. You could have traded it all the way down till either volume climax or till it breaks. So you make a lot, a lot of money. So the 50 EMA is very, very important. So that's, that's triangles in a nutshell. Um, as I said, I don't, I'm not a huge fan, but they can be very profitable if you get in towards the, outline and i never use stochastics for anything but triangles i don't care what type of triangle it is that's the only time that i would use uh, stochastics and typically i'm using my macd's and my rsi so i'm going to put them back on because those are what i use in my everyday uh, process and I'm sure you can use some MACD here, but look, I mean, the RSI, it's, it's not really giving you much, is it? It's not really telling you what, what, what's what's happening, and neither is the MACD. So that's where stochastics uh, work really well. And as, as I said, volume is also very good. And start popping trend lines onto volume bars, onto MACDs, onto RSIs. On this 50 EMA, this is a killer line. Um, you know, it's, 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 it's a great line. So... Um, now let's just find out what the fuck is going on here because um right here we go so maybe it is a triangle so well i mean it's not i'm not happy with this c wave being down here but maybe it's a i mean i'm not really going to call it a triangle to one so i'm not happy with that with that but um at the same time it's it's a tri it's a triangle to some degree shape or form it's not accurate um as you can see volume is diminishing diminishing but here there's a lot of volume coming in and it's not going down it's 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 still it's making a hammer candle now i suspect this might be buying coming in and i suspect bitcoin might be breaking out uh, potentially so 
even if we do the um, the breakout here so it's that target you just move that across from either the breakout or the or the down here I mean let's just do it from the breakout yeah 8291 so I said 8400 something so that that could very well be um, your way five off way three coming in now so you know it's I mean the reason these triangles happen is because people are taking profit yeah that's this is just how they take profit so you can't take profit in one candle um, you know if these guys are buying here these, these big composite traders they want to sell to the public and that takes time it takes it takes a while to sell a security and wave 4 is typically known as the profit wave um, the major amount of money you're ever going to make in your life is going to be on a wave 1, 2 and 3 wave 4 is just the fuck about piss piss about profit wave and then it's during wave 5 when these hedge funds are now slowly getting out of their positions and they're going they're doing business on the short side waiting for it to turn so you know that's that's what wave 4 typically has this long drawn out triangle they're simply the um the uh the uh, big guys selling to the public i suppose with that being said if you saw it in a wave 2 it's probably reaccumulation but typically you'll see it in a wave 4 and you know that's just what they're doing they're just selling slowly 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 here selling a book at a time very very low volume and then they're getting ready to move out here on the long side um but typically the volume of a wave 5 isn't as strong as the volume of a wave 3 unless you've got an extended fifth um, but we'll get onto that in a later video so yeah um, that's triangles that's a bit, bit of history on the federal reserve and the fed um, shout out to all my american fans i love you country but um, unfortunately it's being run by a bunch of uh, crooks which is um, which is the same as the Bank of England really because they actually run the Federal Reserve so if anything you can blame our country for it um, yeah so blame blame Britain <laughs> um, anyway um, that's that and once again this superb line God I love this line this is such a great line if there was any line any moving average you want to put onto your damn chart it's the 50 EMA so it's the EMA not the linear version I mean look at this it's still providing support is still providing support unbelievable and here i mean you could argue here it broke through but you know it's it's not a convincing break is it i mean that's not convincing yes it closes below the low but then this immediately comes back in so you know i suppose you can close 50 percent of your longs here but then immediately you're getting a hammer candle and then it gets confirmed the other way so don't be so quick to close if you're on this trading strategy don't be so quick to close um, but even then if, if you only trade the 50 EMA line suppose you're buying here and let's say you know let's say you bought in here and you sold when it broke this line I mean you're making 17.21 percent on your money okay so you know many different ways to trade I used to use moving averages a lot then I moved on to Elliott and Fibonacci and volume but there's no doubt there's no doubt whatsoever these oscillators stochastics macd as much as i diss them and i do they have some sort of benefit okay and most of the time is to help you confirm what you're seeing is in fact what you are seeing so but yeah no offense to anyone who uses those indicators but they can be very very helpful so anyway i'll leave that to you guys i suspect bitcoin's going to break out to the bullish side here um you know minimum sort of target 8200 so it's a good good place to go long um you know, if you're in the UK, just go on IG index, put your stop. I mean, to be safe, you can put your stop below here. Um, so what kind of risk reward are you getting? Okay. You see target is what? 8,100, I think we said. Um, 8,100. So call it 8,200. Essentially, you put your risk. Well, that's a bit too low. It's got no business going down here. To be safe, you put it below this candle. So what are you getting? 5.33 risk reward ratio anything more than three or four to one is a very good trade so you know you're risking 1.1 percent you can make 6.3 percent anyway look as though that's the timer um hope you guys are liking these videos um please continue to like share and subscribe and i'll see you in the next video and um god bless